Hi, in this video I'm going to explain what a limit switch is, I'm going to show you how it is connected, how it operates, and then I'll show you some real life examples of two limit switches installed. Right, just having a look at the most common types of limit switches, usually look like this, three terminals and then this lever. This is pressure sensitive, you can see that if there's an object that moves, it can open and close the switch. Here's one with a roller, here's a much smaller one. On my left here, I have a multimeter which is set to measure continuity. Now, when I short out the leads, you can hear the meter beeping and also you can see it's showing a zero, signifying a short circuit. So over here, I've got a switch just to demonstrate what I'm going to be doing. Close the circuit, open the circuit. Close the circuit, open the circuit. So a limit switch operates in a similar manner. If I put my one lead over there and my other lead over here, you can see that when I depress the lever, close circuit, I've shorted out the circuit. Open circuit, short circuit. Open circuit, short circuit. Now you can see there's another terminal here and if I move this lead to this terminal, this terminal is the normally closed terminal and it even says so on the packaging. There it says C for common. Then there is an NO, which stands for normally open, and then there's a normally closed, NC. If I connect my lead to the common and the NC, notice that the meter is showing a short circuit when the lever has not been depressed. The switch is in the rest position, and only when I depress the lever, look at that, it opens the circuit. Closed, open, closed, open. And if I swap this to this one, can you see that this is normally open, but because I'm depressing the lever, it is now closed. So it is normally open at rest. Closed, normally open. Short circuit, open circuit. So you can see that these two are opposite of each other. I'll now show you a circuit diagram. Over here, I have a single pole double throw limit switch. Why is it called single pole double throw? Well, we have one pole there, and the link can move into two positions. So I can throw this link either there or there. So having a look at this at the moment, you can see that current can flow in the load like that. But this load over here is disconnected. When I move the link or throw the link to there, I now have the link closing there. This is open. I now have current flowing in only this loop over here. This part here is disconnected. So going back to my limit switch, notice I have one pole over here and two outputs. These are the two options I can choose for how I operate my limit switch. If I want my circuit to be closed, then I will connect this lead to the normally closed. Then when I depress the lever, it'll open the circuit only when the lever is depressed. If I go to this connection, you can see that it is now a closed circuit, but it becomes open once I release the lever. I'm going to quickly open this limit switch and show you what's inside. Here are the internals of this limit switch. Notice how this steel lever pushes on this plastic piece. So if I had to move this lever, you can see the operation of the internal section of this limit switch. I've now connected my multimeter. This is the common and this is the normally open output and this is the normally closed output. You can see how that link is closing the circuit. The current needs to flow from there around there on this link and then onto this output in order for the circuit to be closed. That only happens when I depress this and the link is made. So it is normally open and now it is closed. When I move this to the normally closed side, you can see that the link is already in place. So this is a short circuit. Watch what happens when I depress the lever. I'm actually opening the circuit. Over here, I've got a much smaller limit switch, but you can still see it says common NONC. Over here, you can see there's a specification shown on the side, five amps at 125 volts or 250 volts AC. So the maximum current that this limit switch can open is five amps. Over here, this one can open 15 amps at 125 volts or 250 volts AC, 
But look at the DC current. It is much less. 0.6 amps for 125 volts DC or only 0.3 amps for 250 volts DC. So when choosing your limit switch, you'll also need to not only choose the design or the type, you also need to decide on the specifications of the limit switch. I'll now show you two limit switches that would be used in practice. Over here I have a gate swing motor. The shaft over here is connected to an arm which pulls a gate open or closed. It's very important that the gate controller unit knows whether the gate is in the open position, closed position or still traveling. If you look over there, you'll see two limit switches. So over there, you can see there's a raised section and there is a flat section. So they've designed this in such a way that as this gear rotates, the raised platform engages the limit switch to close the contacts. So in this case, they've used two limit switches, one for the opening position and one for the closing position. As you can see, the one limit switch is already been engaged or pressed in. The other one is not. You see, that one still can be depressed. This one is already depressed because of this raised platform. Now, as the motor turns and the gate moves away from the rest position, we can see how this limit switch is no longer engaged because this ramp has now shifted. The principle of operation is, as you can see, this ramp comes round and depresses that limit switch, either there or there. So test it one more time. Releasing that limit switch. Now you can see there comes the ramp. It's going to engage in that limit switch. If I just press it now, you can see how it stops the uh, motor from going. It's told the main board that the, mo the gate is in the open position. Obviously it wasn't. Now it's going to go and close it. If I had to just press it like that, I've actually stopped it, telling the controller that the gate is now closed. Right, so the limit switch on that gate motor, you can see it had a roller. And as the raised section moved past the roller, you can see how it actually forced this down and therefore the controller knew the gate was at its limit, hence the name limit switch. If it was a garage door that had to be closed, you can see as the door closes, reaching the limit, the limit switch therefore either closes the circuit or opens the circuit depending on whether you use the normally open or the normally closed connections. Often limit switches are used on gates and garages. If you look closely, you can see there's a little wire that is resting on this part of the gate. Watch what happens when I open the gate. There's a limit switch hiding inside that box. So when the gate closes, it's actually engaged the limit switch and therefore the gate control system updates the alarm system to note that the gate is now in the closed position. Right, now not all limit switches look like the ones I've shown. Here are some other examples of limit switches. And if you're browsing through a catalog for just limit switches, you can actually choose the limit switch based on the actuator type. What needs to move or roll in order to activate the limit. Here it says adjustable lever, ball bearing plunger, basic switch, cat whisker. So having a look at the cat whisker, there is a wire that's formed and obviously when it moves, it activates the switch, either opening it or closing it. Over here we have the plunger type. So you can see there's many ways to initiate the opening and closing operation of the switch. And there's many ways for these limit switches to be installed. You can see that on this tool, we have one limit switch here, one limit switch there, and then there's one over here. So we've got limits for the table moving back and forward and left and right. So there's obviously another limit switch on the other side of the tool. Over here, this is a CNC machine and there are several limit switches in place here. There's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. So basically, wherever there's movement and the machine needs to know the limit of the movement, we have a limit switch. So this motorized arm can move left and right between that limit and that limit. And the table over here can move back and forward. And obviously, there's a limit switch at the back and then there's one over there. So as you can see in this catalog under the topic of limit switches, I have 1,662 options available. So you'll need to decide exactly which type of limit switch and what type of fitting you're looking for. Thanks for watching and cheers.